Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Currency of Anarchy. I'm Josh Davis. I'm Thomas Shane. And if you'd like to see the show uh, during our live tapings, please find us at Cur of Anarchy on YouTube, Mondays at 9 o'clock Eastern, uh, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific. And you can find our final product, uh, take it, add graphics, edit it down, and you can find that final product on Voluntary Virtues Network at youtube.com slash user slash voluntary virtues. Um, so, yeah, uh, we've got Kika Houston. How are you doing, Kika? Wonderful. Thanks. Good awesome. Yeah. And we got Sheppy. I don't even know what your last name was. <laughs> That's nice. Oh, Morgan. <laughs> So, um, yeah, this is going to be a big show, though. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Federal Reserve. We're going to talk about income tax. We're going to talk about how it all comes together, how that system basically steals your purchasing power and um, it basically enslaves you uh, through a debt-based system. Um, I know myself that Kiko loves this subject, um, how do you want to start this off? I want to start this off on the the very basis of how uh, the Federal Reserve and the income tax are interconnected, and they started at the same time. Um, it was a. Uh, it's basically. It's not in that sense. It's not so much that we're indebted, but that the government is indebted. Therefore, we are indebted because we're taxed constantly. But, um, yeah, can you expand on that, Kika? Well, I mean, that's exactly how it is. If, uh, if like, like we were just explaining, the Federal Reserve was uh, enacted through the Federal Reserve Act, and income tax was brought into fruition in, in the, the United States. And the government is enforcing that taxation on uh, innocent people who don't need to be taxed um, under threats of violence. So we have no choice other than to pay for it. Uh, this taxation, or you know, we're imprisoned. It's it's basic extortion. It's extortion in one one. Right. It doesn't get any more simpler than that. The only difference is it's uh, it's all based on faith. So if nobody knows that we don't have to pay taxes because this is technically an illegal system, well, illegal, um, then they, they they lose the government basically. I mean, they can keep printing money and keep buying stuff without our you know, without donating our money to this tax system, but it won't be as effective because their buying power will be lessened. The value of their money will be too low. Yeah, um, it it's a uh, it's a game to them, and the whole the whole thing was set up uh, way back when, on, and it was basically done. Um, with only a few people in the Congress at the time, and they passed it, and then the uh, president signed it later. Uh, it was kind of like they uh, they created the system. They went off to some island off of the coast of Georgia, and then Jekyll Island, they, yeah. Jekyll Island, right? Jekyll Island, yeah. And um, yeah, they just made this within nine days, and. Uh, there were just a few modifications, from what I understand, once it got into the Congress, and that was it. So they gave the control of money to the bankers. And um, It's yeah. like these days when Congress sneaks in a bill and overnight, and nobody knows you know, what was enacted, and then we have to find out the next day. It's like that one stupid excuse. I, I forget which Congresswoman it was, but uh, made I think it was Hillary Clinton, actually. Made some bullshit excuse, pardon my language, um, that we don't know we don't know what this bill entails, but we're gonna find out as soon as you know it's enacted. That's how we have to find yeah. out about this crap. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but that's exactly yeah. how it went down with uh, the Federal Reserve Act. Yeah, you, you were talking about no. you were just talking about the Patriot Act. Yeah, the Patriot um, Act. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I I forgot what her name. Uh, Nancy Pelosi, I believe. Yeah. Um, yes. Not that it matters because it's all government and it's all a joke. But, um, yeah, how about that? You know, they they uh, created this thing and they passed the 
income tax and social security all at the same time. One was basically uh, the Social Security Act was uh, just for the identification number, really. I mean, you know, it was also, uh, you know, creating another uh, pyramid, basically. But the real purpose was for identification. And well, so, so when you register have... your gun with the state, when you right. register your gun with the state, it's like the same thing. We're all just registered humans. Right. Something's, something's playing with your microphone. Uh, I don't know what it is, but. No, I'm just let you know. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, what do you have to say, uh, Sheppy? What you got? I think that, you know, the whole system, it, it's been designed to enslave everybody. It's basically just a system to steal from everyone to benefit a very few. Right. And the Federal Reserve System, it's basically just it's pure evil. Like yeah. there's no other way to describe it than that. Like Yeah. My thing is, like, real money is not a piece of paper. It can't be a piece of paper because if it were, then I would be rich too. I've got plenty of pieces of paper right there from my computer. Can I just, you know, I can just draw on, a, on that too, you know? Not a problem. You know, if money were created by paper, it would be, um, you know, the most simple thing to do. But that's why... Um, Counterfeiters are put in jail. Um, it, it, that's the whole thing. Like, if you were to uh, counterfeit a Federal Reserve note, it's kind of ironic. You know, that's exactly what they're doing. <laughs> they're counterfeiting. Yep. Um, yeah, like, I wanted to, you know, kind of show off, but at the same time say that, you know, th this is like 10... Things or uh, ten coins of silver. I can't open it right now. I can't get my fingers to do it. But um, yeah, ten coins of silver. I, I got more, of course. But you know, any kind of silver is real money. This is money. You know, it's not. Uh, it's not the paper that's in my wallet. It, um, they but they put a ruse over us. Uh, you know, it took a hundred years, or actually probably about sixty years, to do it. You know, that we went from actual money to paper certificates. Uh, you know, it was a gold certificate, and then silver certificates, and then and, and silver was in quarters and half quarters and or uh, half dollars and um, uh, dimes. And, you know, they were made of silver, and then eventually they went to nickel and copper mixes, and um, they even you know, destroyed the penny as well. Uh, went from copper, mostly copper, to uh, copper and nickel, you know, and well, now, now I mean, we... it costs more to make a penny than it does, uh, but the penny's even worth. The penny's not even worth a penny anymore. It's worth less than that, but it costs more to make the actual cent itself. Right. And, I mean, so some people understand the fundamentals of getting rid of making a penny, which makes sense, except why aren't they questioning money itself, like all of it? You know, like, question, what is a Federal Reserve note? It's what, what is, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the, a Federal Reserve note is basically an IOU, but I couldn't go down to 7-Eleven right now and, you know, hand them a handwritten IOU and, you know, buy a pack of smokes or whatever, but they take Federal Reserve notes, which doesn't make any freaking sense to me. Right. Well, it's like I mentioned earlier, it's all based on faith now, and it's all legalized, so... Yeah, money yeah. Our laws now to perpetuate our money. Yeah, that's the only thing uh, that makes it valid, is the confidence that's behind it, even though it's not... Uh, it's not really valid, you know, if... Um, I, I could burn a dollar bill and I wouldn't miss it. Um, but if I tried to melt a, uh, some silver down, but I could, you know, uh, make it hard again and it would still 
you know, function as money. You know, that the value is not lost. It can't be lost. And some people make the argument that, well, money money's value is lost if you drop it in the ocean, you know, like a treasure chest. Well, no, it's not because someone can find it later. You know, but if, if the dollar is buried and then a hundred years later it's, uh, you know, uh, taken back from the ground, it's worth like a hundred times less than it was before. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even silver certificates are only worth their Federal Reserve, you know, value except for the collectors nowadays. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that's the thing. I wanted to talk about that and what else? Um, um, so it's a it's a banknote. It's an asset. It's it's debt. Uh, it's not an asset. It's debt. It's uh, like you said. It's um, it's an IOU. Uh, it, but the thing is, when it is created, the only way it's created is by uh, writing a check against a, a balance of zero, basically, at the Federal Reserve, and it, they buy uh, bonds from the government. And the government, um, you know, it issues those bonds and uh, gets Federal Reserve notes for it from bankers. And then the bankers uh, go to the Federal Reserve and it basically do an exchange. Uh, the IOU is deposited, a check is written out, and currency is created. You know, it's a vicious cycle. And then since the government's in debt, we're paying on the debt, you know, the IRS, and, um, you know, so all of our labor goes to paying off the debt to the Federal Reserve, and that debt cannot be repaid ever. It, it's never going to be repaid. Because if we did pay our debts and the government pays its debts, then all of that currency has to be, you know, uh, thrown, you know it, it evaporates. Therefore, yeah. the only thing eventually would be interest on the debt. That's the only thing that would exist, if theoretically. Therefore, the whole thing would collapse. It would be a joke. Hey, Corey's joining us. How about that? Uh, I'm sorry. I forgot I was watching a movie and I but, forgot. Uh, better, better late than <laughs> never. Right. <laughs> shall, we, shall we go into the morality of the situation? That doesn't really tie into what we're talking about. Well, it, it does and it doesn't. Not not the big overarching conversation. The Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve, and all this stuff is not. It's amoral. It's not moral or immoral. It's amoral. It's just, amoral. Yeah, it's not. Morality is not a. It's not an aspect in this in currency and economics. Morality has no place in economics. It's theft. Uh, morality has no. Wow. Okay, that's a statement, Thomas. Just saying. I would argue that it's not about what's right or wrong. It's what's about. It's about what's practical for the person making the action. I understand where the Federal Reserve is coming from. It's practical for them to do this because they make a lot of money off this. Obviously, yeah, it's practical. Yeah, but but immoral. at the same time, I would say that it's um, it's immoral because it's uh, basically it's a form of dominating the entire economy, forcing everyone else to use your currency. But yeah. immoral, but but saying that something is immoral is claiming objective morality, which is attempting to dominate the preferences of others with your own. Saying that your own version of morality is more important than other people's morality. That's why I don't like to talk about morality because I think it's bullshit. Well, when you when you're forcing something on someone else that they might not want to use or do, it's immoral to them. It's not immoral to the person doing it. So you're saying that a state would be valid in this case? I'm not saying anything is valid or invalid. I'm saying it's inconsequential. That morality has nothing to do with this. Uh, okay. It's a separate argument is what I'm trying to say. It's not a separate argument. Okay. Not in this case. How, how is but, it but we can move on from it. We don't have to have the conversation. All right. So um, I usually stay out of these arguments whenever they get into it online. Yeah. Let's see. I don't like the fact that people like to try to make everything either moral or immoral. And what they're saying most of the time is, 
if I don't like something, it's immoral. If I like something, it's moral. And it's like once you truly realize that and you start to figure out that it's all bullshit, that it's just preferences, it's just personal preferences is, is all it, it is. If you're trying to rip someone off, you're not going to say this is immoral or it's, it's, it's not it's going to say it's immoral. They're it's trying to rip someone off. It's, to the person being ripped off, it's immoral. To the person doing the ripping off, it's, it's amoral. It's not, it's not a, a thing to them. So I'm just saying it. People place so much importance around morality and they, and they assume that it's this, it's this intrinsic thing in human nature and it's really not. It's just, it's just a way for people to try to impose their preferences on others is what I'm saying. Uh, that, I just completely don't agree with that. I mean, yeah. it's your subjective opinion. Morality is subjective. Doesn't matter what no, you no, no. Yes. or disagree with. The opinion of this conversation is objective, but morality exists. So if morality is objective, that means that it occur, that it's intrinsic and that it occurs in nature. So where does it come from in nature? It's to say it's that really morality is objective is to say that it's not. To say that no, to say that morality is intrinsic and objective is to say that it's not a human construct. So if it's not a human construct, where does it come from? Nature. Where in nature? Morality doesn't exist in nature. I don't have morality. Thomas, let's not have this conversation. You said you didn't want to talk about it. Let's forget it. Okay. All right. Where were we anyway? Um. um. All right, so um, I, I don't know if you guys have been watching silver and gold a lot, um, like prices and such, um, but prices have been going down for both uh, for about, I don't know, six months to a year or something like that. Um, and especially silver, it's, it's definitely becoming a very, very low, low price, in my opinion. Um, doing some historical calculations. Uh, uh, historically, the uh, ratio for silver and gold has been about 16 to 1, you know, silver to gold, 16 to 1. Um, about, you know, um, and that's, that's, that was basically market determined. Um, up until um, 1913 when the Federal Reserve was instituted, and then um, when they broke off of, uh, they they had a that standard where uh, silver and gold were both currencies for some time together. Yeah. And um, and then they broke off from that uh, here and there. You know, went from gold to silver, and uh, eventually, uh, once once we got off or. I'm I'm losing track here, but basically it jumped from, or gold jumped from about I think it was like five bucks or something to thirty five bucks, and then it jumped later on, uh, probably in the seventies, um, up and up to about eight hundred, eight fifty, something like that. Uh, um, and I mean it was fluctuating and going up, but it took a big jump, um, up to eight fifty, I believe. And then it went uh, down a bit, and over the last few years, gold has gone up to uh, 16, 1800, and now it's back down to 1200. Um, that's a very vague explanation of what's been going on, but um, and silver has gone up to 50 uh, in 1980, I believe, down, and then up to uh, down to say about um, 15 bucks in that range and then it went up to about 40 only a couple of years ago and then now it's down to about 17 and it was around 20 for the last year now it's going down slowly to 17 ish so what, what are the figures at now for gold and silver yeah um, let me do that right now here's my little thing here so I'm thinking um, if there's been a steady decline would, you, would that have to do with Bitcoin I'm not a big I haven't gotten into Bitcoin yet I think I should but I believe it has a lot more to do with the quantitative easing. Yes. Well, no, no. The quantitative easing means there's more dollars in the system, so the the prices should be going up. Well, see what they're doing is they're uh, they're not really putting those dollars directly into the market. They're putting those dollars into uh, 
into bonds and into uh, you know stock market investments like you know housing and and whatever else. So yeah, well they're also investing in the army and the navy and that kind of thing right now. Uh, the wars are propping up, yeah. and I think that's why the so dollar is gaining cool. value and everything else is you know well yeah it's the same well, but. but the money, the money is disappearing as soon as they're printing it, you know. So yeah. the, while they're they're putting more money technically into the market, it's being used up faster than they're printing it. Well, it's also not going into the market. The market. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's going into yeah. real it's estate, into a very small fascism. sector. What happened? So well, it's going into fascism. Basically, it's going into uh, you know companies that are contracted by the government on. You know, no bid contracts with, you know, yeah. a blank check, and yeah. they just suck up the money as fast as they can throw it at them. Right. Um, yeah. Just to get back to Kika, um, the prices. Uh, might as well just go over them right now. Silver. The last show two weeks ago, uh, it was eighteen sixty six. Now it's seventeen forty eight. So that's a dollar and eighteen drop. Uh, I think. Dollar uh, and eighteen drop. That's a uh, six point three percent change. That's pretty ridiculous, actually. Uh, gold. Um, ha it was twelve thirty three fifteen. Now it's twelve fifteen thirty one. So that's a seventeen eighty four change. It's only about uh, one point four percent change. Bitcoin. Last time was four sixty eight. Now it's three seventy five. Big drop. Uh, Ninety three oh four. Almost a hundred bucks. That's a 19.9% difference. Wow. So, uh, yeah, this is what I'm saying. The dollar is gaining value right now. Like and like you said, it's going out. If, if they're printing money, it's going out overseas or it's going into specific markets, very specific markets. So we're not seeing it. We're definitely seeing inflation in food, for example. I'm, I'm seeing that. Oh, yeah. um, and I know that this can't last forever. This has to go up to, my guess, silver, for example, has to reach 30 bucks, in my guess. Um, I, I would guess that it'll, it'll probably drop a little more first, but then, yeah, it'll start going yeah. up. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So, um, anyway, Kika, what are you thinking? Um, I'm putting you on the spot a minute. Um, what you, what's going through your head right now? Well, and I, I'm just thinking if the, I mean, like I said, like I mentioned last time I was on, I I'm not an economist in any way, shape, or form. I just have my own assumptions and theories. But my first, um, my first theory is if there wasn't so much darn fascism in government, we would see a lot more fluctuations in the market that would make sense. But they're they bounce all over the place because, like uh, uh, Corey mentioned. Um, they're just printing money and sucking it right up into the military industrial complex. And there's nothing we, we don't see it. There's nothing we can do about it. So it, yeah. it, it sort of ruins the values of other currencies like gold and silver and Bitcoin. And we don't know how that how that all gets ruined in the first place until we analyze the data later. So that's I mean that's all I can. Well, yeah. Let me talk about uh, the gold and silver fixes. Um, they got rid of the golden, uh, the gold, no, the silver fix. They got rid of that in August, and then they put in a new silver fix. Um, now there's a computer. Um, so, like, I thought that because that they they were going to get rid of the silver fix, uh, I thought because of that they would, um, we we would see actual market prices on silver, but we're not going to see that. Um, yeah, they tricked you. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so, like, silver is, it's an industrial metal. Um, it is uh, it is actual money. I, I didn't do the research on this part, but I do know that in certain languages around the world, uh, the word for silver is actually money. So... That's, that kind of tells you how much we don't know in the United States. Most people don't know that silver is actually money. Gold is actually money. You know, yeah. um, you know, this is actually money and not just a currency. It's not a currency. You know what I'm saying? Well, anything that has 
actual intrinsic value can be money rather than, you know, fiat like what we have is it's money because they say it's money and people trust it as being money. But things that actually have real value are real money. But And that could really be just about anything, but it tends to be gold and silver because they're, they're precious metals. Um, people have used them since forever, you know, and... And they actually have real world applications, you know. It it's started a lot out more like, than that, though, Corey. Like, there's more to it. Like, it, money is meant to be a store of value, and you can't really say that a feather, for example, is a store of value. It's going to disintegrate eventually, just yeah. like paper. Oh um, well, yeah, well, that's another aspect to it. Is gold and silver do not corrode. They don't rust. They don't corrode. They don't degrade. Silver um, tarnishes, but you can, when it's tarnished, you can just polish it right up and it's shiny again. You know, yeah. it doesn't actually destroy it in any way. Right. Yeah. More to it than that, I think. Yeah. Gold and silver are elemental metals. Yeah. We could probably use titanium, in my guess. We could use that. We can use platinum. We can use palladium. Yeah. We can use. We can probably use any element because well, any, any, uh, yeah. any, any metal that becomes uh, well, I guess you could say any um, resource that is scarce, and since silver and, and gold are, are that uh, are more more scarce minerals than like say feathers, like uh, Corey mentioned, um, they have more value, and, and thus palladium and titanium and any precious metal, uranium, I mean, go down the yeah, list. And the fact that they're a metal, so, you know, it's a solid object, it's not going to break, it's not going to rip, it's not going to fall apart, you know, so it just makes sense that those be used as currency, you know. Right. Anything can be used as a currency as long as there's demand for it. It's easily divisible and, you know, uh... You know, it, it has lasting potential. Yeah. Like, it won't break down. Right. And even temporary currencies can be used, like people trade weed as a currency. Yeah, hash coins, man. Like I'm, uh, I'm, I'm looking on uh, Wikipedia and I'm, I'm looking at the definitions for fiat money, and it says fiat money is a currency which derives its value from a government regulation or law. It, different, it differs from commodity money, which is based on a good, often a precious metal such as gold, silver, um, which has uses other than as a medium of exchange. Um, you could also use uh, commodity money also has to do with um, copper, salt, and peppercorns. I mean, anything that, uh, like you said, would be in demand, you could use as a form of money. Currency is fiat money, basically. I mean, anything that derives its value from government regulation is fiat money. Yeah. Right. I think that um, some monies or some currencies of the past still can't be money, like a cigarette. Um, not everybody's going to want that, like yeah. me, for example. I don't want that. Well, that'd be but, more like a trade good than a currency, you know? Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, you could sell it, right? I guess. You, could easily, you could easily barter, you know, 50 cigarettes for, you know, a chicken egg or something like that, and that would yeah. that would be fine under a bartering system, but it would be much yeah, more true. feasible to use silver and gold to buy chickens and cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, even, you know, if you didn't have any silver or gold, yeah, you could barter with cigarettes or, or whatever else. Like, I, in jail, a lot of times they use coffee as a form of currency, but that, again, that's not money. That's a trade good. Right. Yeah. That's interesting stuff. Good stuff. Um, yeah, so my thing was I was uh, going to mention uh, silver and gold a lot on this show, but and that's the basis of this whole show in the first place. It's the currency of anarchy. You know, it's about liberty and money, really, in my opinion. But... Um, uh, I would also, yeah, let's also talk about Bitcoin a little bit. Uh, there's, uh, I have some problems with it, but I also see a lot of good with it. Uh, certainly, it's not, uh, it's not a monopoly. I love that. Um, 
uh, even like back in the day um, when banks would issue their own currency, um, it's it was uh, it was real capitalist though uh, yeah. when they did that because there was competition between currencies. So uh, most of the time, the currencies would have a, a given exchange rate for gold. So you could take one currency to another bank or take your gold and just, you know, swap between currencies using gold or silver. Right. Yeah, um, but with uh, Bitcoin right now, that seems to be the big player, but there are other Bitcoins as well, as it were, um, uh, cryptocurrencies. You've got, like, Dogecoin. I, I think that's freaking awesome. I'm a nerd, so Dogecoin. Uh, yeah, but there's tons of them. Um, I, I don't know if you've got if you guys have uh, ever dealt in any kind of cryptocurrency at all. Any experience there? No, I I haven't used them. I I haven't either, but I'm I'm hearing more and more often that the market for cryptocurrency is skyrocketing. Like uh, when Bitcoin was introduced, um, 2008, it wasn't such a big deal because everybody was bringing up. Potential problems like what are what if hackers got a hold of these accounts and you know looted all the Bitcoin, etc. Um, but I guess the the scripting and the programming behind all the Bitcoin transactions is a lot more foolproof because there's much more incentive to keep your Bitcoin. Yeah, there's a lot more security revolving around. It's definitely a lot more secure than the PlayStation Network. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, if Thomas were still with us, um, I know he'd be a big advocate of Bitcoin as well. Um, I guess I just have one uh, real complaint with it, um, and it's it could be a major complaint in the future. Um, I don't think it's a real problem right now, but I think that if uh, we were to lose the value of the dollar completely, I think what they do is uh, try to shut down most communications with the internet or a lot of it, and Bitcoin might be one of them. Um, Bitcoin would just transfer over to the dark net. Yeah. Like. Right, but how, how do we know what that looks like right now? Well, you know, for people who already use the dark net, it wouldn't be an issue, but for the rest of us, uh, it might be a pretty serious problem. We'd have to learn how to get, how to access the dark net, how to use it, because it functions completely differently. And then how to get your Bitcoin wallet back, if you even could get it back once you're there, you know? Right. So I guess that's my only real complaint. I mean, real complaint. Um, and I don't really otherwise have a complaint. I'm a programmer. I love computers, and I love the idea. It's completely off the grid. Um... It's um, it, it's basically liberty and my life put together. I, I love the idea. So uh, other than that, I, I guess my thing is, though, I, I like silver and gold at the moment because ever since I was a little kid, I, was, I, I love shiny things. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, other than that, guys, I mean, the Federal Reserve itself, um, that's kind of the big player. Uh, that's the big problem. That's, um, but, you know, um, I haven't heard much about it for a while, but a few months back, or maybe it was, it was last year, it's been kind of a while now, J.P. Morgan was talking about um, introducing their own version of Bitcoin. They wanted to get into that crypto business. Oh, of course they do. Yeah, they want to get rid of that on uh, yeah, make it a monopoly, I'm sure. Yeah, they want to get rid of the competition from Bitcoin. They figure if they make their own, backed by the name of J.P. Morgan, everybody will trust it, and people will stop using Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, everybody has so much trust for J.P. Morgan these days. <laughs> it's, it's... Wait, what'd you say? Everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys see the um the Twitter campaign that JP Morgan had? No. no. Oh well just hop on uh, Twitter and type in the hashtag AskJPM. Oh yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> it, was, it was a complete Twitter PR fumble. 
Yeah, people were asking them questions like, so do you actually drink the tears of dead babies, or do you only bathe in them? <laughs> it, it, was, it, uh, it was like, um, they did a, I forget which police department did it, but there was a oh, police yeah. department that was like on the thank a police officer day or some, some BS yeah. holiday. There's, there's been like three of them. The New York police did it. I yeah. think the Chicago police did it. And then some other random, you know, police station you never heard of. Yeah. But it's just one of those one of those things where companies or corrupt organizations try to get in touch with their supporters and it's just a PR bollocks. It's just a fumble. Yeah, they're they're trying to they're trying to restore their image and it's completely backfiring. Because everyone on the internet who knows anything knows that <laughs> they're full of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <coughs> So, um, yeah, uh, I also wanted to go over how uh, a lot of people don't actually understand that it's a Federal Reserve note that's in their wallet. Um, it's not a certificate. It's not backed by actual hard money. Um, a lot of people still think that it's, you know, backed by gold. Um, and actually, I just found out that the Federal Reserve hasn't had gold in its coffers since 1934. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, uh, I think it's the Treasury, the United States Treasury, and the... They, the they, keep, uh, and, what? they keep claiming that there's gold in Fort Knox, but they won't audit it. Yeah, that's what I've, that's what I've been hearing, too. There's supposed to be loads upon loads of gold, like... Tons, tons of gold, and nobody yeah. has heard of the exact amount of gold that's in these fortresses. The last time that they did an audit on Fort Knox's gold, um, I think it was during the Kennedy presidency, and for the entire audit, all they did was they opened one room out of the thousands of rooms down there that are supposed to be filled with gold. They opened one room, and from the picture that they showed... The room was only half full, and all they did was pick up one gold bar, took a picture, put it back, closed the door, and called it good. That's not messed up. Yeah. Oh, was that was that the same? Was that the video with um, that older gentleman, that professor with the giant hair? Is that, is that the video you're talking about? Uh, it wasn't a video at all. It was, they just took oh. a photograph. It's uh, a black and white photograph of this guy in a suit holding a gold bar. Okay. And you can see in the room behind him that the room is like half empty, and that's the only room that they opened. Right, right. I've uh, I've seen a similar video, and it was I guess it was more recent. It was probably two or three years ago, and it was in I can't, I can't remember which treasury it was, but it was in the UK, and they oh. were. They were taking a this, this professor. I think it was a professor of economics. Uh, walked into the treasury and he did the same thing. Picked up a gold bar and you know inspected it and complained about all this gold being locked up in this storage facility and and he wants to experiment on it and everything. But there was a, I think he made a he got a, uh, an estimate from one of their officials and that there's like ten million pounds of gold in that treasury versus Fort Knox, which is like a hundred times more than that at least. Yeah, supposedly. Yeah. yeah. If it's actually even in Fort Knox anymore. Mm -hmm. Aliens. <laughs> well, no, the, the theory that I've heard going around is that they think that it's been all shipped over to the Chinese because we owe them so much money. That would make sense. Yeah. I don't know. It kind of messed up that uh, I, I thought that uh, the gold was supposed to be associated with the Treasury originally, and then I found out that it was supposed to be with the Federal Reserve because they basically own us. Yeah. But now they don't have the money to back up our debts to other countries, well, which is obviously whatever, kind of the whole point. Yeah. Right? Whatever, like whatever owns owns Whoever owns our debt gets our gold, basically. So if China owns 10% of our debt or whatever, they get 10% of our gold, and the banks get you know, the other 90%. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, yeah. technically, it, if the gold is still there, it should be with the Treasury, or at least under control of the Treasury. Because even though you know the Federal Reserve is a private-owned banking system, 
it is supposed to be under the authority of the treasury, where they derive their authority to print the money from the treasury. And it'll it says it says on your Federal Reserve notes it has a U.S. Treasury number on it. Right. So. Right. Well, the the uh, bank notes used to be exchanged exchangeable for gold or silver. Now you can't exchange it for gold or silver. So it's yeah. supposed to be um, in the treasury is now a relative term. Yeah. So now even if it was in the treasury, now you couldn't take it to any bank or treasury office to exchange it for that gold. Yeah. So even if it was still there, uh, the money in your pocket doesn't mean shit as far as that gold goes. Fiat money. Yeah. Yep. Right. Back by back. <laughs> yeah. Let's. You know what? Uh, let's let's do it anyway. Um, I think that the system is an immoral system. Um, I think that the system is uh, it's a violation of liberty, and uh, I think that's the whole point of anarchism in the first place is liberty, freedom. Um, and uh, if you're going to vi violate others' liberty, then you have um, you violated the non-aggression principle. Basically, uh, yeah. you're uh, being aggressive. You're uh, you're you're basically thieving. To me, all of non-aggression uh, can come down to thieving. Like yeah. murder is a theft of life. Um, rape is a theft of your body, um, uh, or it's a violation, it's an injury, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, slavery is a theft of your labor and of your free will. Yeah, right, exactly. And that's exactly what we have right now yep. um, with the currency. So, yes, it's a violation of liberty. It's, uh, it's immoral right there. To me, it's that simple. Well, I think um, the only basis on, on which you... Uh plant your moral stake, and not that I don't agree with you, I, I agree that it's immoral, but I think immorality comes with consensus. If everybody agrees that something's immoral, obviously they're all going to consider it an immoral act, but like Thomas mentioned earlier, um, if a banker or you know corporate banks who get involved with government and issue fiat money into the country believe that this is in their best interest, it's not immoral to them, it's amoral, like you would say. Obviously, to the consensus of people that it affects, well, it isn't. I would disagree with that. I would say that they they know damn well that it's immoral, but they I'm don't sure they care do. because it benefits them. Yeah. Like right. if, if I steal your car, I know damn well that I'm committing an immoral act, but I don't care because I want your car and I'm going to sell it for money or whatever. You know? Right, but at the same time, so the, the point of morality in this sense is do you want that same thing done to you? Right. That's that's kind of the kicker in this case. In this right. case, um, so I don't want my car stolen from me. You better respect me, or otherwise I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, it's so, like I, I had this. Um, I, I I'm forgetting where I heard this. My dad told it to me a while back, and he mentioned that um, he had a friend who was uh, extremely wealthy when he was younger. And, I think he was trying to get into business with him at some point, but didn't didn't work out. But one thing that he mentioned to him was that he doesn't have to care about other people's feelings because they don't have enough money to support their feelings, basically. He can make as much money as he wants, do with it whatever he wants, and he doesn't have to feel bad about it because he has the means to do what he wants um, versus, you know, lesser people. Us who have means. Yeah, us, us pawns. Yeah, exactly. Us um, clubs. So, so for a, a sociopath to consider that objective, that making money is okay and they can do whatever they want, to them that's their moral prerogative. So arguing that there is moral objectivity is right under a consensus, but wrong in a grander scope, in a more existential scope. Well, if you're talking about a sociopath, that's a completely different story well, because exactly, yeah. they, that I mean, person, people, uh, a sociopath, has a mental disorder. Go ahead. A, a sociopath has a mental disorder that prevents them from understanding morality. Right. So that's I wouldn't I wouldn't even count that as as a valid uh, 
argument. excuse because well, see, even even a sociopath knows right from wrong. It's just that they don't care. Right. You know? I, right. I guess you could but argue more, that more just, a psychopath doesn't know. I, I, if I can explain this part, though, about the objectivity, the, the thing is, it, it is universal. This is the problem Thomas has with it, and uh, maybe, this, maybe he's watching or something. That would be great. The whole thing is, objectivity is universal. There are those that kind of skirt by it. The thing is, nature naturally weeds out the idiots that go against objective truth. You know, it's it, um, because if you're going to commit a crime, then you're going to be punished. And that's, that's social in human nature. It's it, within all of us. And th let's say, let's say um, a bear were to walk into another bear's cave. To them, that's immoral and they're going to be flushed out, or just they'll move on to another cave and respect the property rights. I think that's what we're having a problem with when it comes to morality. There are those that know right from wrong. They just uh, don't listen to it, just like you said, Corey. Yeah. That's objectivity, I think. Your, well, your bear analogy is a bit of an appeal to nature, unfortunately. We, I mean... If a bear walks into another bear's den, they have no idea what property rights are. It's basically, basically might of the forest. If one bear can kick the shit out of another bear, then he gets the cave. It doesn't matter. Well, if typically, no. Typically, if a bear walks into another bear's cave, once they realize that that cave is occupied, then they do respect the property and they yeah. will leave. Especially if the bear that's already in the cave has cubs. You know, they're gonna get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Even yeah, if they are bigger. They just they don't want to fight to the death over a cave. They'll go find another one. You know? So my thing is if we makes can, sense. I want to relate this to the money. Once enough of us understand money and understand that what we have is not money, there is going to be a big uprising and they know it. And they can't do a damn thing about it because there's they've, too many they've already um, They've already written papers uh, saying exactly that, that if people understood how badly we're being screwed, there'd be an uprising overnight. They've wrote, yeah. The yeah. bankers have wrote papers on that themselves. People like, understand inflation, but they don't understand the deception of the whole fucking thing. And yeah, yeah they don't I understand, understand how it works. <laughs> they think inflation is just, you know, a natural occurrence of the market where, you know... <laughs> Yeah, uh, they think that well, if I go to work and I make more money, and everybody else goes to work and they make more money, eventually there's more money, so the price goes up. Right. They don't understand that that there's already plenty of money in the system to pay everybody for their labor, but they keep printing more. You know. Right. So that's why enough of us are angry about this, and it's because it is immoral. Because we are being fleeced. We are being taxed, literally. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, so, inflation is basically a different form of tax. It's, it's debasing the value of your dollar. While they might not be directly taking your dollars, they're making your dollars be worth less. Right. Right, right. Worth less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're taking my debt money. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> but I am buying hard assets. Um, I'm, well, basically what I've been investing in a lot lately is survival gear. Um, guns, knives, bow and arrow, uh, you know, cold weather clothing, um, got some ferro rods. Um, I think my next investment, I want to get a hatchet and a machete. Well, nice. a tomahawk and a machete, actually. Do you, yeah. do you have your bob set up? <laughs> My what? Your your Bob B O B. Bug out bag. Oh, uh, well, I don't have it actually packed right at this moment, but I've got the stuff. I just have to throw it in the bag, and I I really haven't done that yet because I don't have everything that I want yet. It takes like a that. night of good planning and shopping to get it all set up. Yeah. Just one night, huh? 
Yeah, well, I mean, it, well, it depends on what size of bag you have. If you want to go light, obviously you pack less shit. But you pack everything that you'll need for sure to la last you in any situation for however big your bag is. But I have a bag that will last me about three days. Yeah, that's what I go with, about a three-day bag, you know, just to be on the safe side. But really, a bug out bag is only either. That's huh? just all survival gear. Yeah. But a bug out bag is really only meant to get you from point A to point B. It's not, you know, a long term survival thing. Right, right. I was thinking of getting like a bunch of food to store it away, like beans and that kind of thing. Would that be oh. smart? Oh, oh no, beans and rice are perfect, man. I've got a whole closet full of beans and rice. Get huh. into canning. Yeah. Learn about canning. All right. Yeah, but but for the beans and rice, go with the dry store. Hmm. They last longer dry. Mob left. Mr. Sheppy left. What is it? Just me and you now? Well, oh, there he is. No, he is He's here. He's jumping back and forth. Yeah. Um. So I was thinking. Um. I think that's about it for the show. What do you? Any uh? Anything else I'm missing? Sheppy, anything to say over there? Sorry, I lost connection. Um, well, I've got a bunch of canned food stored up. Um, like, my plan is if some sort of calamity happens, I've got, like, I don't have any guns, but I've got knives and shit. And I intend on bugging for a couple of days. Yeah. But beyond that, like, not really. Right. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say before you end the show, I yeah. really like the idea that you've got behind the show that it's based on freedom and money because yeah. uh, really when it comes down to it, uh, freedom is all about money. It's about who has the money, who controls the money, what kind of money is it, what you can do with the money. I mean, you don't have freedom if you don't have money. And if your currency system is fucked, so is your freedom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah one thing that was posted uh, in, uh, like, on a building, I think it was uh, the, uh, uh, shoot, the archives in uh, Washington, D.C. Eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. I mean, if they're going to say anything about liberty, at least they said that. It's true. You have to be vigilant. You have to be watching your liberty. Even if we had an anarchist society, um, you'd still have to watch out for yourself. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You get those marauding band, bands of ANCOMs rolling through your neighborhood, you better do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be like, you watch don't own that house. You don't own that house. That's community property. Those are... Those are <laughs> <laughs> it, it always so, uh, comes back to definition with those guys. They just don't. They don't get it. You know. yeah. They no, try no. and redefine how somebody owns something, and yeah. they just put themselves in a shit hole. What What I really <laughs> like though is when they try to define the difference between private property and personal property. You ever heard that one? Yeah, like I'm not going to defend just because you redefine my property types. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to shoot you if you try to steal my shit, regardless of if it's personal or private property. That yeah. sounds like the government, because that's how they define employees and citizens and that kind of thing, and person. Well, and, well that's that's taxation. Taxation is a redistribution of wealth. You give yeah, your money to the government, and the government gives it wherever it wants to. Yeah, yeah well, it's just like, like if you've ever been to court, um, as far as the government's concerned... There is no such thing as people. By the government's definition, they're, they're all persons. Right. They they make a plural of the word persons, and it's no longer people, according but to them. But it's not just them. That's old English too. That um, the people was meant to be a group, uh, like the whole group, and persons is actual English. It's not just Congress or whatever. Right. That one, yeah. Well, le well le uh, legalese that is used in uh, the American court systems and in the UK court systems all dates back to Old English. 
Um, and yes. that's how we all get screwed out of our rights for the most part in basic cop interactions because we don't understand legalese. Yeah. yeah. They've just redefined everything that's already listed in the dictionaries. Yeah. yeah. Well, in Citizen. common law courts, they don't use legalese. <laughs> when, when was the last time you were, actually, you were actually in a common law court? They don't use them in this country anymore. They exactly. they quit they quit using the common law courts after 1812. After the War of 1812, we agreed to adopt the British legal system. Yep. Well, um, thank you very much, all three of you. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming on. That was a good show right there. Yeah, that's uh, a whole different show on that legal system. We should do one sometime. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Actually, the next show was meant to be about morality, actually. I'm not sure if uh, we're going to be doing that. We'll see. But um, I'll keep you guys posted. I appreciate you all showing up and awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Good show. So uh, thank you all for watching, and take care.